Hello, my name is Elizabeth Monroe in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry under the advisement of Dr. Corey Rosinek. Today I'm going to talk to you about our current project called the Optimization of On-Electrode Nanoparticle Modified Boron Dope Diamond for the Electrochemical Detection of Hydrogen Peroxide. What that basically boils down to is we are developing an electrode materials and electrochemical techniques to be able to detect hydrogen peroxide. This is important because hydrogen peroxide is considered a reactive oxygen species. Reactive oxygen species, or ROS for short, are normal immune responses in our bodies. But when overproduced, they can lead to what is called oxidative stress, and ultimately to diseases such as neurodegeneration and cancer. Now we're focusing on hydrogen peroxide because one, it is electroactive, which is important in electrochemical detection methods. It has a longer lifespan and is more abundant than other ROS species, and it is a precursor to many ROS species, giving us a good starting point for this development. Electrochemical detection methods offer a cost-efficient alternative to other analytical methods, as well as provide the spatial temporal resolution required for miniaturization and detection at the cellular level. Now we're starting with boron dope diamond as our electrode material because one, it offers a wider potential window, essentially giving us a more positive and more negative potentials that we can apply as opposed to materials currently being used. It also offers a decreased penchant for fouling so that when we do go into cell cultures, it has less biofouling and offers a lower capacitive current or a low background current. And as we increase the speeds for cellular level detection, our background currents also increase. So having an electrode surface to begin with that has that lower capacitive current is useful for our future work. The only problem is that we cannot actually detect hydrogen peroxide on carbon-based electrodes like BDD. So we do have to modify our electrode surface to be able to gain that hydrogen peroxide detection. We modify our electrode surface with a two-step modification process. In step one, we are conducting what we call a wet chemical seeding process, in which we first coat our electrode with sodium borohydride, which is a strong reducing agent and then we coat with a metal salt solution of interest. In our case, we're using a one millimolar solution of silver, gold, platinum, and palladium. And what is essentially happening on that electrode surface is the sodium borohydride is creating areas on that electrode surface onto which the metal salt solution can be reduced to metal solids, giving us what we call metal nanoparticle seeds. In step two of, our, of this process, we are applying a sufficient enough potential to further reduce the metal salt solution to metal solids on that electrode surface, giving us a way to size control the finished metal nanoparticle sizes on that electrode surface. And when we take our modified electrodes to the scanning electron microscope, we can see the, that we get SEM images, onto which we can deduce a couple different things. For platinum and palladium, we can see that there is a more even distribution of metal nanoparticle seeds on that electrode surface as compared to silver and gold, where we have areas that are more dense and areas that are less dense. And with platinum and palladium, we're also seeing a more uniform size of those metal nanoparticles, as opposed to silver and gold, where we have bigger sized nanoparticles and smaller nanoparticle sizes. So silver and gold give us a less even distribution of metal nanoparticles on our electrode surface. At this point, we want to test whether we need the two-step modification process or if we can do just one or the other. So we conducted what we call a control study of the modifications. Here I have palladium as an example of the control studies that we conducted. We first ran a palladium disc electrode in one millimolars of hydrogen peroxide so that we could see what hydrogen peroxide actually looks on that particular metal. And in dark purple, we can see that there is a defined peak for hydrogen peroxide on palladium. When we drop coated the sodium borohydride and the metal nanoparticle 
solution without an electrodeposition step, we can see that there is no peak for hydrogen peroxide, showing us that without that electrodeposition step, there is not enough metal on the electrode surface to give us the detection that we need. And when we conducted the two-step modification while eliminating the sodium borohydride, we can see that we did gain that detection of hydrogen peroxide, but there is no well-defined peak. And when we conduct the two-step modification process, we can see that there is a well-defined peak for hydrogen peroxide. And so this shows us that, yes, indeed, we do need that two-step modification to give us the resolution that we are seeking. Once we verify that we do need the two-step modification process, we can conduct cyclic voltammetry for all four of our metal nanoparticle modified boron dope diamond electrodes. And we're doing CV in our PBS solution, which is our electrolyte solution, and in one millimolars of hydrogen peroxide. For platinum and palladium, as we scan more positive, we're seeing an oxidation peak for hydrogen peroxide on our electrode surface. And as we look into literature for the mechanism of hydrogen peroxide oxidation, we find that for platinum, we are actually oxidizing the platinum first to platinum oxide, and then we're oxidizing the hydrogen peroxide on those platinum oxide sites. And that's the electrochemical step that gives us these peaks. As we scan back to our initial potential, we're actually regenerating the platinum oxide, giving us back that electrode surface onto which we can once again oxidize hydrogen peroxide. There is not much literature on the mechanism of hydrogen peroxide on palladium, but what we have found states that they believe the mechanism for platinum and palladium should be the same or similar. When we conduct CV on our silver and gold modified electrodes, we actually get what we call cathodic detection of hydrogen peroxide, where as we scan more negative, we're seeing a reduction peak of the hydrogen peroxide. Now, the reduction of hydrogen peroxide has been well studied on silver and gold, and so we do know that the mechanism is a first a catalytic conversion of hydrogen peroxide in solution to oxygen. And as we apply our potentials more negative, we're reducing oxygen, giving us this oxygen peak. Now this will come into play later when we want to do these detection methods in cell cultures, where we know that cells need oxygen to be viable. And so at this point, we cannot differentiate between what is hydrogen peroxide and what is oxygen, as we're catalytically converting that hydrogen to oxygen and our peak response is of the reduction of oxygen. We then wanted to see if we could differentiate between different concentrations of hydrogen peroxide on our electrode surfaces. So we conducted what we call chronoamperometry, in which we apply a potential that's sufficiently positive for platinum or palladium, or sufficiently negative for silver and gold to either oxidize or reduce the hydrogen peroxide. And we took into account the currents that we see as we change the concentration of hydrogen peroxide. We applied those current responses to a linear regression to see whether we got good linearity between the changes in our concentrations and the current response that we saw. And what we noticed was that all four of our electrode surfaces gave us good linearity as we increased the concentration of hydrogen peroxide. The other thing that's noticeable is that the sensitivity on silver and gold is higher than that on platinum and palladium. And that could be due to the fact that we're seeing both hydrogen peroxide and oxygen in solution in that silver and gold, giving us a higher sensitivity. But we're also seeing a higher limit of detection and limit of quantification on silver and gold, as opposed to platinum and palladium, which basically tells us that we theoretically can detect lesser quantities of hydrogen peroxide in solution on platinum and palladium. We also looked into the double layer capacitance or that background of the, each of the electrodes when compared to the boron dope diamond.
And what we saw is that palladium gives us the, the least increase in that capacitive current, while platinum gives us the highest increase of that capacitive current. And again, if we think back onto our SEM images, we saw that platinum and palladium gave us a more uniform uh, size of nanoparticles, averaging about 35 to 38 nanometers, whereas silver and gold gave us higher nanoparticle sizes, averaging between 75 and 80. We can t then take all that information to give us insights into how we should proceed with our future work. First, because we cannot differentiate between hydrogen peroxide and oxygen in solution, we will be eliminating the use of silver and gold modified electrodes. For platinum and palladium, they are not statistically different at the 95% confidence level when we look at their sensitivities and LODs and LOQs. So we will be optimizing the, the modification process for platinum and palladium. And we also want to conduct further investigations onto the mechanism of hydrogen peroxide detection on palladium nanoparticles. Lastly, we want to miniaturize our detection method because, again, we want to go into cell cultures. So we want to miniaturize the modification process for microelectrodes and increase the speeds of our detection methods to be able to have real-time detections of hydrogen peroxide. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone in the Rusinik group, especially Dr. Corey Rusinik for his guidance, Paula Cordero, my peer who has been working with me on this project, as well as all the undergrads that we've had that contributing to our project. Thank you very much for listening.